Good morning and welcome to Unity on the Space Coast on this beautiful Sunday. So glad you can join us. We're going to be starting off with Surely the Presence. mighty power and God's grace I can hear the brush of angels wings I see glory on each face surely the presence of the Lord is in this place Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Join me in prayer. God, we are so grateful to be here today, joining either online or here at the church in person. We know how truly blessed we are as a spiritual community. We know that through you, God, we have everything we could ever possibly need. May we celebrate the gifts we have today. Showing gratitude gratitude, gratitude. We know that there is truly only one power in the universe and in our lives. God the good, omnipotent. We give thanks for this in and after the nature of Jesus the Christ, and so it is. Amen. 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 Yay, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Yay. Happy Sunday. Yeah. I love this. I just love Sundays. I'm awfully glad that each and every one of you, whether you're online or here in the building, decided that you wanted to spend the next hour of your day with us. We have put together a great service for you, and we're here to celebrate you and the good works that you're doing and the good works that you're doing all throughout the week. We have special music today by Michael Triandafils and Barbara McGillicuddy. Right. Yes. Yeah. Supported by Miriam Cruz, all under the direction of this Eric guy. Brooke. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we wanna we wanna say thank you, thank you, thank you to our sound guys and girl. We yeah. have yeah. We have John and Alex and Sadie is in the back doing the online bits. All right. All right. We're very, very blessed to have so much talent. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but they get better and better and better every single week. It's very, very exciting. So we have birthdays to celebrate today. It's the first Sunday of the month. Yeah. And I know, Lois Longley is her birthday is today. Yay! Yay! Happy birthday. As I was typing that in, Lois, I was thinking, I swear it was only two months ago that we celebrated your birthday last time. <laughs> Guess it's been a whole year. Mm. Paula Chalfont's also in the house Yay! and her birthday <laughs> was last week. Suzanne Baker on the 18th. Yay, Yay Suzanne. And me on the 29th. Yay! Yay. Yay! Let's join together and say our... Happy birthday. Oh, let's sing happy birthday. <laughs> yeah, why don't we get through that? I don't know why I didn't catch that. Okay. Happy birthday. statement of 
of being here at Unity on the Space Coast. Let's say it together. We, we are the creative, creative I am, dedicating, dedicating our, our lives to its full realization through, through compassion, inclusiveness, and joyous service. service. Amen. And let's say our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Yay, God. All right. Now join us as we sing our anchor song for May, Let It Be. When I find myself in times of trouble, every mother comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken-hearted people living in the world agree, there will be an answer, let it be. For though they may be parted, there is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. 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 There will be an answer. Let it be. Let's say our affirmation 
We're celebrating wisdom as our divine power of wisdom for the whole month of March. So let's say our affirmation together. I, I am guided, guided in divine, divine wisdom, wisdom in every, every thought, thought, word, and, and action. Can you feel that? Yes. Every yes. thought, word, and action. And so it is. Wonder, should I wear red or blue? Yellow. The red makes me look peaked, but I think the blue needs to be washed. Wear the yellow. If I put a sweater over the stain, I bet the blue one would be fine. How about the yellow? I don't know. Maybe I'll wear yellow. What we are witnessing is a glimpse into the average mind in the earthly realm of consciousness. A normal and ordinary woman making plans for a typical run-of-the-mill day. However, today we are able to see more. Today we take an observer's view from the depths of the unchanging realm. We are able to detect the activity of divine ideas in action. Beyond the ever-changing outer appearances, we are able to glimpse wisdom in action. We are able to hear the voice of discernment, and yes, we are able to feel the power of judgment in this woman's life. For after all, the average man or woman on a typical day doesn't make it out of the door without the ability to evaluate and make choices. But how aware is this quotian woman? What choices will she make? And what outcomes will she create? Let us observe and find out here in the Unity Twilight Zone. Oh, I don't know. Yellow is too bold, isn't it? Yellow is great, really. But the red doesn't work. And the blue has a stain. What should I do? I just can't make up my mind. Just listen. You've got this. Huh? The yellow brings confidence. The yellow does help me feel confident. And it's fresh from the cleaners. Yes, yes, that's good. The yellow it will be. And the boss likes yellow. And I love the boss. And I want the boss to like me. <laughs> so I'll go out and get the yellow post-its and the yellow pens and the yellow highlighters and oh I wonder if I can find a yellow stapler and oh, maybe a yellow car whoa Nellie attraction is good but there can be too much of a good thing oh that is a bit much isn't it I really do like the boss 
And the boss really does like yellow, but the boss likes pretzels too. Pretzels are fine, just not too many. A simple demonstration of divine ideas at work in the life of a normal everyday woman. And yet, there is so much more at play here. The power of wisdom partnering gracefully with the powers of love and understanding. The perceptive evaluative quality of judgment combined with the executive deciding faculty of the will. And all this, a depth of wisdom ever to be tapped is available to even the most average of us all. In fact, not only available, these divine ideas are in action all the time, whether we pay attention or not. And all for us to see here today in Unity Twilight Zone. great actors for today. Woo, 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 woo. All right. Was that fun? Yeah. <laughs> Rod Serling here. Yep. So fun. So wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. <laughs> do you know someone that is very wise? I do too. I know a few people that I feel are very, very wise. How's it going with your Lent commitments? They're slippage. <laughs> I heard good, uh, they're slippage. I heard a lot of things. I had an extremely interesting uh, experience last Sunday. A few of us went out to eat lunch after church, and we went to the IHOP. No, Denny's, I'm sorry. We went to Denny's, and we went in and sat down, and I have to tell you, there is absolutely no time that I'm out to breakfast, lunch, or dinner that I order pancakes, French toast, or waffles. Never. I know better. Sat down, opened up the menu, saw the picture of the French toast, and went, that's what I want, right there. That's what I want. I completely forgot that I had made a commitment to give up sugar for Lent. <laughs> completely forgotten it. Never even thought about it. I didn't have one. Never even thought about it. Until after I, I only eat half, so I ate half, and I was like, oh, that was fun. And someone at the table said, I thought you were giving up sugar for Lent. And I went, oh. Slippage. Slippage. Humanness. I was shocked at how tricky my brain was. Just didn't even pay any attention. But then, I was sharing it with a mentor. And the mentor said, oh, but Sundays don't count for Lent. Oh, that's true. Saturdays Sundays don't count. Sundays aren't counted in the 40 days of Lent. Always a loophole somewhere, right? <laughs> but you, seriously, you know, that really isn't the point. It wasn't for me anyway. The point for me was that I wanted and still do want to eliminate from my life something that I know is not good for me, something I know does not serve me. And so, but I'm not going to beat myself up for it. It happened, I did it, and I learned a lot by just how much my brain did not care. It was amazing to me. I was functioning purely on the picture with the syrup. That was it. There was no, there was no connecting to a higher source. <laughs> 
So that's, that's how I'm going. I, my commitment, I told you I'd tell you, that my commitments for um, Lent are to not do sugar and also intermittent fasting. So just so you know what I, I made a commitment to. But I thought that was really, really interesting that I didn't tap into my inner wisdom while I was looking at the menu. And, and normally on any other day, if I saw that picture, I'd go, oh, nope, not for me, and, and pass it up. But not that day. Anyway, so wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. It's one of our 12 powers that Charles Fillmore um, wrote about. As a matter of fact, I can tell you what he says about it. In his revealing word, it says, Wisdom is the intuitive knowing, spiritual intuition, the voice of God. The voice of God within as a source of our understanding, mental action based on the Christ truth within. Our affirmation today, I'm guided by divine wisdom in every thought, word, and action. I thought I got too tall here for a minute. There we go. <laughs> Wisdom is the blend of knowledge from the head to the heart. And I would take it one step further. Say it has to go from your head to your heart to a total consciousness. It has to become a part of me to the point that I don't have to make a decision that I automatically go into the behavior I want to represent, the behavior I want to demonstrate, without having to think about it, that that's just my natural being. So I take it one step further. Heart, I'm still thinking about it. When it becomes part of my consciousness, part of my being, my knowing, I am that demonstration. Does that make sense? You know, each of the 12 powers are represented by one of Jesus' disciples. This one is the disciple James. Its corresponding color is yellow. And the location of the power of wisdom is in the pit of the stomach. The power of wisdom is always available to you, even when you feel disconnected or lost. The three disciples that were most often with Jesus during really important events were Peter, who represents faith, and the brothers James and John, which are wisdom and love. You need to have faith, wisdom, and love blended together, right? Because wisdom without love is cold, and love without wisdom, can kind of run amok a little bit, be precocious and sometimes silly. Wisdom is the highest form of spiritual knowing, includes divine judgment, discrimination, intuition, and other activities of the mind that come under the heading of pure knowing. Wisdom is not dependent on reasoning, intellectual understanding, or deduction. I'm going to repeat that. Wisdom is not dependent on reasoning, intellectual understanding, or deduction. You can't think your way in to divine wisdom. It simply shines as the light from within that illumines the way and reveals whatever needs to be shown at a particular time. So do you guys know who the is considered to be the wisest man ever born. <laughs> Confucius, that's a really good answer. Although, under his picture, it won't say that, and I'm not sure why, because we quote him all the time. Underneath the picture of King Solomon, you'll find the wisest man ever known. Um... Solomon, when he became king, he was the third king of Israel. And when he, 
became king, the story goes that God came to him in a dream and said, hi, what is it that you'd like me to give to you? And Solomon said, I would like understanding so that I can rule your people. Understanding so I can rule your people. The story goes that God was so delighted with that answer because he didn't ask for anything for himself or he didn't want to, you know, longevity or riches that his, his request was so selfless that God gave him an abundance, an overabundance, a complete and total abundance of wisdom. And Solomon ruled with riz- wisdom, with, with wisdom, with <laughs> wisdom for 40 years. I think the, the, probably the most popular story about Solomon is the one where two women come before him claiming to be the mother of a baby. And neither one of them want to give it up. And Solomon says, we'll just split it in half. And the woman, what the first woman said, no, 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 let the baby live. Go ahead and give it to her and let it, let it live. And the other woman says, that's right. Nobody gets it. Cut it in half. And Solomon, in his wisdom, understood that a woman's love, a mother's love, would absolutely overshadow her need to have that child. So he knew immediately who the mother was, right? So one of his greatest gifts, or actually his greatest gift, was his wisdom. And he built great uh, buildings and built a great society. He actually built the first temple in Jerusalem, which was very important, but but his biggest weakness was his need for things. His lust and his greed. He had 700 wives and 300 concubines. How do you feed that many people? I just can't even imagine. And, and, (laughs) yeah, don't go there. I'm not going there. And he had to have more and more and more and more. And to make those, some of his wives were actually foreign women. And to make them happy, he built them uh, structures to praise their pagan God. And the story tells us that this did not make God happy. So on one end, he's doing all these, he's using all this wonderful God wisdom. And then in his life doing all kinds of unacceptable behavior. He would even go so far as to enslave his people. Now, these are the people that he told God he wanted the wisdom to rule. But he needed people to build all these structures. And he needed people to be in his army. So he would enslave them or or kidnap them and make them serve their life serving him. Right? All right, I'm going here. Hang on a second. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so, so the, the lesson in that, there are so many lessons that we can learn from uh, Solomon's story, right? But a really, really big one that I like to pick up is the fact that he really couldn't keep anything. Nothing was ever enough. He always needed more and more and more and more because everything he built, everything he did All of the riches, oh, he taxed his people heavily. And all the riches he would bring in never stayed with him. They were never enough because he didn't own any of it by right of consciousness. By right of consciousness. 
You can't own anything unless you are at the level of consciousness necessary to support it or to receive it. You know, God mind um, is always with us, never changing, totally and complete, all knowledge, excuse me. The only thing that changes and grows is our consciousness level. Our consciousness level raises and we are able to access, utilize, understand deeper understandings of God mind, right? So Solomon had no consciousness to maintain his wisdom I ha or anything that he accumulated. By the end of his life, oh, this guy was so prolific. I have to tell you, he wrote a, he wrote a lot of the Bible. He wrote um, Songs of Solomon, Proverbs, a lot of Ecclesiastes. He, he wrote a great deal. Very talented guy. But he wrote toward the end of his life in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 11. He said, When I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. So King Solomon was the wisest man, man who ever lived and also one of the most foolish. God gifted him with unsurpassed wisdom, which Solomon squandered by disobeying God's commandments. So that's the wisdom that we're talking about when we talk about our 12 powers, when we talk about our divine power of wisdom. We all use it. We have that little voice, wear the yellow. It's fresh from the cleaners. And then sometimes we decide and, and move on, and you get back over here through your day and go, I knew that was going to happen. I really should have paid attention to myself. Right? We all have divine wisdom. And it's always working in our lives. What matters is, are we at a consciousness level to receive it? And then are we at a consciousness level to understand it? And then are we at a consciousness level to follow through with it? Well, when I was in Danny's looking at that menu, I was at no spiritual con uh, consciousness at that moment. I was just wanting that pancake or French toast. Um, yeah, we all have it. I threw myself off by talking about the pancake again. Um, <laughs> right before the pancake. <laughs> what, what Paula has so kindly asked is if I would repeat again what I said just before the pancake. Um, I'm going to give it a shot. God never changes. Nothing changes in God. God doesn't look at us one day and say, and this is not what I said before the pancake, but I'm getting there. Um, God never looks at us and says, today you're going to get good and tomorrow you're going to get bad. That would be uh, God being capricious or changeable, right? God is always all good, all knowledge, everywhere present. That's what we say in our unity five principles, right? The only thing that changes is our consciousness. Are we at a consciousness level where we can receive it? Now, we're always receiving something. But are we receiving thou shalt not steal at the level of don't steal, it's not good. Okay, I won't. I'll follow the rule. I won't steal. Or are you receiving thou shalt not steal at a level of it's not possible for me to steal from you because 
I don't own it at the level of consciousness, by right of my consciousness. And if I steal from you, I'm hurting myself. Is that the level that we're getting that commandment at? So you have to be at the level to receive it and then to understand it and then to follow through with it. That's what I said before the pancake. <laughs> so, so, thank you, thank you. So um, that's what I'm hoping that we take the time to pay attention to this Lenten season. I know that I'm having the opportunity to do that, and I'm truly appreciating it very, very much. So let's not be like Solomon. Let's not receive the greatest gift from God ever and then squander it throughout our lives. Take a moment and breathe. Do your meditation. Do your quiet time. Connect with spirit. And do what it is that is going to give you the joy of being the best you that you can be. So now let's go into a few moments of meditation. In meditation, we find peace and realize our constant connection to source. We remember our alignment, and as we do, we may feel a shift in us at our core. All outer fades as we stay in the moment, focusing on our breath. Take a breath right now. Hold it and let it go. Breathe in the recognition of all that you are. Wise, discerning, balanced, filled with the light of the divine. Know that what you are is truly wonderful. Within you are the resources, powers, capabilities, wisdom, and more to live a vibrant life, to handle any circumstance, and to shine. You make a beautiful difference in this world. Let's take a few moments to take that in. You make a beautiful difference in this world. Affirm with me as I pause and turn within, I feel divine wisdom flowing through me, energizing and renewing all areas of my life. Divine wisdom is my guidance, my spiritual compass, I apply this inner wisdom to the decisions that I make, the words that I choose, the ideas and beliefs I hold in my mind. I trust in divine guidance and wisdom. They join with my goals and desires to illuminate the clearest path forward. 
I am blessed to have this core of wisdom for decision making. Because of that, my steps are in order and my thoughts rise to new heights. Centered in spirit, my decisions are made with direction and confidence. I am clearly and purposefully guided to that which is mine to do. My inner wisdom guides me to the right decisions, the best steps forward, and the perfect way to bless others with my words and actions. And so it is. I've been going inside over time I've been on a hunt for love sublime In so deep I can't turn back Afraid to pause and lose the track Life after life, birth on birth Ooh. I've been chasing the fruits of earth through harvest fields, I wander on, headed for the coming dawn. Sparks of love, small and tame, small and tame. Gonna blow it. Sacred 
That's an original Michael Trianophil. An original Michael. We have some of the best music here ever. Don't you guys agree? Yeah. Thank you. That was a great song. I love Thank that. You. So this is the time where we celebrate our prosperity with our gifts, our tithes, and our love offerings. If you're online, you can give on our website or on our Facebook page. And if you're here, we have a basket up here that you're welcome to use. We're not passing it for obvious reasons. So. Let's take our offering either in our mind or actually physically in our hands. Let's see it for what it is, the substance of God. And let's say our blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have all, all that, that I give, give and all, all that, that I receive. receive. Thank, Thank you, God, God for, for the joy of giving and receiving. receiving. Mother, Father, God, we thank you, thank you, thank you for this offering, knowing that it is the very substance of your being and that it was created for us before the world was even formed. We know, acknowledge, and affirm that according to your perfect law, it will return to each giver heaped up, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And because we are blessed enough to understand this perfect law, we do give thanks. And so it is. Amen. Amen. I know you've been hurt, too scared to love, too scared to love. You didn't deserve pain, cause your precious heart is a precious heart. They didn't know who you are, but God does. Oh. It's gonna take just a little time But you're gonna see that God is here to love you What if I fall? God won't let you fall What if I cry? God'll never make you cry And if I get scared? God'll hold you tighter When they're trying to get to you No, God is the fighter What if I fall? God won't let you fall What if I cry? God'll never make you cry If I get Look in the mirror, you're beautiful, so beautiful. God's here to remind you, you're his only one, so be his one. To heal all the pain that you've been put through, with a love like you never knew, just let it God show you. What if I fall? God won't let you fall. But what if I cry? God will never make you cry. And if I get scared? God will hold you tighter. When they're trying to get to you, no, God is the fighter. What if I fall? God won't let you fall. What if I cry? God will never make you cry. And if I get scared? God will hold you tighter. When they're trying to get to you, no, God is the fighter. Woo! I wanna believe that you got me. God swear he does now until the next life. I wanna love, wanna give you all of my heart. Yeah. God Woo. won't let Woo. you fall. What if I cry? God will never make you cry. And if I get scared, God will hold you tighter. When they're trying to get to you, no God is the fighter. What if I fall? God won't let you fall. What if I cry? God will never make you cry. And if I get scared, God will hold you tighter. When they're trying to get to you, no God is the fighter. Woo -woo. What if I fall? God won't let you fall. But what if I cry? God will never make you cry. If I get scared, God will hold you tighter. When they're trying to get to you, no God is the fighter. I am not scared. 
God is the fighter. That was awesome. Who wrote that? It's a Keith Urban song. Oh, Keith I Urban love song. me some Keith Urban. He was Keith Urban. I was Carrie Underwood. You didn't get that? <laughs> I do now. Man, I see it now. I see it now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I would love to um, chat with anyone who's new to our uh, ministry, whether you're online or you're here in the building. I'd love to take some time and tell you more about our ministry, give you more information about our ministry. So you could call the church. You could contact us on our website or contact us on Facebook. If you call, chances are I'll answer the phone. And if you have a prayer request, anything that we can share with you, um, whether it's something that you need support in or something you want to celebrate, let us know about it. We will hold you in prayer for seven days, and then we send it up to Missouri, and they hold it in prayer around the clock for another 30 days. So there's some really strong prayer support that goes into each and every one of those requests. Again, either on the website or contact us on Facebook. We're happy to do that. And when you do a prayer request, if you ask, one of our prayer chaplains will give you a call. So I have a few announcements. We have our Dare to Dream series. I'm pretty excited about this. I'm ready to put down on paper what I want to dare to dream for. Anybody else like kind of ready for that? Yeah. 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 We're going to be led through this by Reverend Cynthia Alice Anderson. She's going to speak to us for um, two Sundays. And then we'll have two Wednesday night classes. And I'd really love it if we had a strong support, if we showed up big for the Dare to Dream series. So please consider spending the Wednesdays of the 17th and the 24th online with us on Zoom to do the workshops for Daring to Dream. Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday. Oh, I am so excited. We're going to have those outside, weather permitting. <laughs> Even the weather not permitting. We did pretty good last time. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best Saturday night live routine I've seen in years. Really. That was awesome. That was awesome. <laughs> so if you haven't been to one of our drive-in services, you, you need to come and join us. They're really a blast. And you can either sit in your car and turn up the radio... Bob tells me it was the best he's ever heard of service because he could sh keep the doors closed in the car and turn it up as loud as he wanted it. And there's no lag time. It's a good, clear, crisp sound. Or you can bring a, a lawn chair and sit in front of your car. However you want to do it. Let's do Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday outside, weather permitting. Then our metaphysics discussion, Tuesdays and Thursdays, we're actually going through the lessons in the back of the book, um, Keeping a True Lent. And we're having a really good time and some pretty intensely deep discussions. So that's every Thursday, Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time on the same Zoom number and password that we use for everything else. So if you're interested or you find yourself with absolutely nothing to do at, 12, at 1245 on a Tuesday or Thursday, go out on our website or the Facebook page and check any one of our events. They all have the same Zoom and password. And come and join us. We'd love, love, love to have you. Then we have morning meditations at 6 a.m. with Mr. T. Woo-hoo-hoo. Um, and I see that he, he logs in on Zoom every weekday morning at 6 a.m. and does a half an hour of silent meditation. Um, great way to start your day. If you haven't, like, beefed up your Lenten practice yet, that'd be a great way to do it, right? So join him for that. And then we have Unity Cafe Open Mic Night. Yay, March 12th. That's a Friday night. It's the second Friday of every month. It's our favorite Friday. 
It starts at 7 o'clock on Zoom. We have been having a blast. We, we've had a good turnout and great talent, either um, live or people send in videos. Either way, it works beautifully. And um, we get to know a little bit more about the artists. We uh, get to see a little bit more of their work, much more than you can see on a Sunday. It's actually a lot of fun. Josh has done stand-up for us. We've had the spoken word. We've had music. Great. And if you're, you know, what a great way to spend a Friday night. Yeah. Put your feet up, turn on Zoom, and just be entertained. It's been an awful lot of fun. Then we have our meditation workshop that is on Saturday the 13th on Zoom also from 9 until 10. And that's with Mr. T as well. All right, I think that is it. Is that it? Let's sing our song of peace. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. together one more time. I, I am, am guided by, by divine, divine wisdom in every thought, word, and action. action. And so it is. I love you. Have a wonderful week. Mwah. Sunday. Happy birthday, Lois. Yay.